Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring and today it is 11th of November, yes, namely my birthday, yay! And usually we do some fun laps, some cool activities at the Nürburgring, but currently the track is closed and in current circumstances it's also difficult to do anything fun. So my gift for you today is uh, explaining to the old audience what has happened with the ring tractor and to the new audience introducing a project car, so two in one. So first of all, what has happened with original ring tractor? And for the new audience, what is the ring tractor? We'll get to that later. Well, it has been smacked, crashed, totaled, written off, simple as that. Uh, on the 1st of August 2020, yes, almost three and a half months ago by now, I will get later to that in, the, uh, in a bit explaining why it has taken so long to explain, I went out for a fun lap after a VLN race. I wasn't racing myself, but the race was happening and evening TF was happening. And as I was turning into Eschbach towards Brunschen 1, well, the car decided to go straight. Either there was an oil spill, coolant spill, I don't know, whatever happened, uh, the car went straight on the grass. Uh, smashed into the wall, spun out and completely, well, had a very big impact on the rear and thereby it was completely written off. As you can see, I was fine and through the continuation of the vlogs, I did not suffer any major injuries. So um, probably massive shout out to the Ricardo seat I had installed. It has definitely helped to reduce any neck uh, injuries or whatever. So that was very good. Now, uh, we'll get back later to the, what has happened to the car. First of all, why did it take me so long to announce it? Well, there are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, it was a very uh, busy period in my life. I was uh, kind of wrapping up, my, wrapping up my work at RIMAC, moving back to Germany. So I just did not want any attention, like uh, unnecessary attention, whether positive from people who really want to like wish me well and uh, make sure that I'm fine, but also negative from all the trolls and people who are just gonna be like, hey, you crashed again. I'll get back to that later in a bit as well. Um, the second reason, I was just having too much of other content. As you can see, even now with off-season, sometimes I post a flashback vlog from a couple of months ago, uh, which is good for the content, but uh, I've had the priorities to post something else instead of talking about the crash. And finally, and most importantly, I wanted to find out what would actually happen if I don't say anything at all, because in the past, every crash I would say something, I would either say what happened because for the sake of what happened, or for educational purposes, or because it was simply good content when I would be crashing in a race, and it's part of racing, so who cares, right? Some people do care a bit more than others, and they like to make a big deal out of it, but they forget that there is always some dirt on them as well. But anyhow, let's not talk about that. Um, speaking of uh, marketing and PR, again, some companies, when there is a bad publicity, they try to ignore the fact rather than going into it if they don't have any good arguments. Uh, and in, also in my case, I thought, okay, let's see what happens. Nothing. Everyone has forgotten about the crash, people who do know about it, because of course there were locals on the scene on that day lapping themselves, and some people also went to Lens, the recovery service, and took the pictures of the crashed car, which I find, yeah, kind of sad, and to, to spread it around like on WhatsApp and whatnot, that was just really uncool. Um, and uh, yeah, so there were people that they also don't even talk about it. And uh, in general, my audience don't even talk about the project of Ring Tractor in general. Nobody even knows about the car existing, especially the new 60,000 new subscribers ever since the last video came out. So I think it's now time to introduce the new car, don't you think? So let's go have a look. All right, may I kindly present to you, full of excitement, the Ring Tractor 2.0. Wait, that's the wrong car. Ring Tractor 2.0. It's so confusing when you have so many. You can take that one. Yeah. Give it for free. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Ring Tractor 2.0. So first of all, why on earth would you decide to buy a Mark IV TDI as a project car? Well, first of all, as mentioned, I was working for Rimac Automobili, Rimac Automobili, official name, official pronunciation. And I was traveling every two weeks between Nürburgring and here. This meant 2000 kilometers uh, there and back. So I needed something fuel efficient something that was cheap, comfortable, and uh, yeah, eventually could be made into a project car for shits and giggles. And since our mechanic George has a Mark IV, he said, you should get a Mark IV. And that's what I ended up buying. Now, a very important 
point and the very fun part of the project was is that every part that we ended up putting on this car was well not on this car but on previous car was costing more than the car itself and eventually during the crash it was a very good point because when you write off a car the least expensive part on the car is the car itself so and since you have many of those it was very easy to source one there were multiple solutions so within a couple of days i managed to get this car so uh, actually and speaking of the parts i'll get to the, uh, that in a bit a lot of parts were, were able to salvage but anyhow what is this car first of all it is as a license plate might hint it is a pd150 and mark IV for the uh, four uh, this means you have three different configurations of a TDI diesel Golf. The, um, the PD100, which is 101 or 100 or 115 horsepower. PD130, which is 130 horsepower. And uh, also six-speed gearbox, very important, and bigger brakes, etc. And finally, this bad boy, PD150, which comes with a bigger turbo, front mount intercooler, three red letters because with pd100 it's only red t 130 is red t and d and in this you have the full spectrum um so yeah it's a pretty unique unicorn i would say uh so pd150 it's hard to find and it's more uh, it's even more harder to find than pd150 which comes as a four motion so all-wheel drive so th this was a pretty fun base of the car to be honest I paid way too much for this car. It cost me 1,700 euros, but uh, that was because I needed just something quick to get back to Croatia, to get everything back up and running again. Once I got there, found out that the alternator was broken, so we had to replace that. That was uh, another 200 euros with air conditioning pump as well, especially in the hot summer. You can you see it? Yeah, you can focus on there, yep. Um, that was hard as well, so we had to replace that. And then my camera died, so I'm just gonna switch over to my phone. Uh, yeah, what was I? Alternator had to be replaced, the, uh, the aircon pump, and while the car was in Croatia, we found uh, a TT Mark 1 3.2, uh, which was being broken down in parts, and we put the, I bought the, what's it called, the steering rack, the quick steering rack, so now it's equipped with the quick steering rack, which transforms the car tremendously, and additionally with ro lower control arms, uh, which um, avoids bump steer, so to say, or reduces, not avoids. So it already has a couple of mods. Now, when it comes to salvaging the parts from the previous car, what do we have? So we have already the Prochak wheels with winter tires, uh, put new winter tires for the season. The big brake kit and everything was uh, that's on the old car is currently at Poseidon, uh, which is a tuning company you remember the fake taxi mercedes that we went out with so they salvaged the car they, they stripped down the car the old car uh, and we're gonna reinstall the parts back onto the ring tractor 2.0 so to say so we already have big brake kit from stop tech uh grz suspension was never installed on the car we, we tried it but it was something not fitting and we need to go with the car uh, back to uh, to JRZ so they can like completely install it because it was a custom made suspension and it need to be custom uh, fitted. Uh, big brake kit on the rear is going to be come as well, come on as well. Now important thing is that since now uh, I've decided to build this car completely fully for RCN. So it is going to be a full-blown race car. So interior stripped out. I have the Recaro Sportster CS, CS seats, but uh, the full bucket seats is going to be in there for the for racing, of course. Different steering wheel. Uh, shifter I already have from the previous car together with short shifter from Diesel Geek. Um, yeah different dash interior going to be completely different now most importantly the part is the engine what are you going to do to this are you going to put a bigger turbo or something now from the very beginning with the ring tractor 1.0 i made a very good partnership together with uh, dark side developments a lot of people suggested uh, to reach out to them but as a matter of fact for the old, older audiences you know that I already been in touch with them because they came with their Skoda City Go here, the Nurburgring. I drove their car; it was amazing. The S5 or A5 TDI I drove it also here on the ring. It was great. And ever, ever since, I kind of fell in love with diesel. And then I said, like, guys, <laughs> like uh, 10 minutes after I bought the first car, I sent them an email and said we need to do something. And they uh, they made me like uh, a part, uh, a list of parts that they suggested uh, to go for, um, and. Yeah, uh, we wanted to go with that. 
uh, and then eventually now we're going to go a lot more crazier so i give them a go ahead to build a complete en engine so before we wanted just to have a turbo upgrade but now it's going to be fully built engine with a bigger turbo uh, they already built the gearbox for the first car so we're going to reinstall it on here with lsd and um, single mass flywheel and uh, race clutch so it's going to get on there but what I want to say, go check out Darkside Development's YouTube channel because soon, hopefully, once they start building the, the engine, they will be making video about it, uh, how the engine is built, etc. So for that, you can uh, check out yeah, their page. And for me, right now, it's a bit difficult uh, because obviously I will have to bring this car to Darkside Developments to, uh, so to install the engine, to map the car, to build it properly. But now in the current situation with quarantine in Germany, quarantine in the UK, if you travel between two countries, we have to wait and see. Uh, hopefully in a month's time, by the time the engine will be built, it will clear up. So we'll see. But uh, that's currently one of my headaches. Um, of course, the full cage will come as well installed and a lot of other parts. And uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to take you on this journey. I guess by now, you probably want to go for a lap with this car. See what this baby can do in its stock form for a comparison. Should we go for a lap? Yeah, of course. Well, I already did a lap and uh, I got to tell you that it was done on the original wheels and tires, so not on winter tires, but yeah, it was interesting. It was very interesting. See for yourself and uh, the GoPro stabilization was switched like even worse off than it was with the video with Kuba uh, in the GT3 RS. So I apologize for that, but make sure to watch to the end. So enjoy that. Now a big disclaimer, I really do not want to go for a lap because at the end of the day, this is such a, such a, such a shit box. So this is going to be a lap for comparison when the car is finally finished. So you can have some like reference, how bad and frustrating it was and how good it hopefully will be. So most importantly, it has, I don't even know what type of tires it has. It's some, no brand trash the brake pads are pretty thick so they were new when they came with the car so that's okay uh, but the fluid is most likely stock so <sighs> it's something I shouldn't be doing but we're gonna do it for the sake of science so we're gonna take it easy and just it's going to be a very frustrating lap but it will be for me at this point very interesting to see how the steering reacts in terms of the, um, the quick steering rack from Audi TT so Let's start an old baby up. 330,000 kilometers at this point. Yeah, runs like new. All that boost lag. <laughs> Parental advice, there is going to be lots of bad language on this lap. So I try to keep it PG, but I think I'll be so frustrated and annoyed that I might say a couple of bad words. Let's go. The most frustrating lap of 2020. Sun nice and low, so you probably won't be able to see half of the lap. But yeah, this is just the winter setting that we will have to deal with, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Important, we can probably do like this. Important point, switch off traction control because even on stock car, the old Golf, it was going crazy, but in this case, it's not because of the all the horsepower. No, it's because with the quick steering rack, ooh, the boost, ooh, uh, with the quick steering rack, uh, the car kind of panics. It thinks that you're doing something stupid, whereas you might be doing something stupid, but as a matter of fact, you actually don't. Well, you know, it feels kind of like a Need for Speed game, not because we're going fast, but because usually in the last Need for Speed games, the character was having some fancy badass car and then some bullshit would happen to him and then he would end up uh, with some shit box because like his car burned down or it crashed, like in my case as well. I thought I was gonna take it easy, why am I taking the curbstone? I guess you'll never learn, Misha. Anyway, hmm. Well, the good point so far is that What's it called? The traction control is not going crazy. So I guess that's a that's a good point. Hmm. So I think the steering rack is definitely doing its job, the core, the shorter steering rack, because in the past I had to like completely twist the steering almost like 180 degrees, whereas now it's really beneficial. So I'm happy for that. That's going to be gonna do very well for the racing. You know what, fuck it. If 
the car falls in pieces, we're gonna build it up over winter anyway, so who cares? Mmm, traction control kicking in, that's not good. That's not cool. But that's maybe only because of the... When you go full on the... There's like a sudden weight transition and... Uh, what's it called? Suspension transition, who knows. <sighs> well, I'm surprised that the Porsche 996 behind us hasn't caught up yet, so I'm not too sad. Why did I even break here? At this point, it's the fastest that this car has ever gone with me. Because I never wanted to go above 160, but it's approaching 180. Uh, oh well, like I said, if it dies, it dies, like even Drago. tires clearly don't like it ah, neither do I neither do I oh why we were in fifth what the hell <laughs> uh, that was a good assumption thinking that we were in the first gear going through Ironberg but oh well RPM boost there we go you know actually to be honest I'm not too disappointed I was really expecting it to be really bad because on the street I really drive like a grandma with this car because the boost doesn't kick above until like 3000 RPM so it just makes no sense but in this case Those tires are thinking, what the hell is happening to us? You know, my butt is also thinking the same. It's because the seat, seat, seat heating is fully on. <laughs> yeah, this car comes with seat heating. So if you want to have leather seats for your Mark IV Golf with seat heating, hit me up because they are going out for the, for the race bucket seats anyway. Uh, the seat heating is really annoying at this point. Ah, uh, well. So a lot of, yeah, there we go, traction control again. That's frustrating. Do I have to take it out completely and go for a pedal box with ABS and stuff? So at this point, if you're wondering why I usually cut out the sections with fast laps, it's because of the speed limit. And you're like, oh my God, are we gonna get a fine? No, you're not gonna get a fine, but there's a second entrance and exit here and safety, uh, like emergency vehicles are being stationed here. Usually before Corona, you could get off here buy an ice cream or like a sandwich or something, get back on the track. In the evenings, I would go out here and do uh, my groceries, uh, but now it's just the emergency exit. So uh, in case emergency vehicle needs to get on the track and you're just going there full send, 120 kilometers an hour and crash into the recovery track, uh, truck, not track, uh, that's not gonna be good and he will be the one at fault. So uh, yeah, we usually, we obey the rules, we take it easy, but at the end of the day, it's obviously, your responsibility. So, at this point, the track goes uphill, and yeah, we're missing a couple of hundred horsepowers. So it's going to be a pretty long piece, and um, should I tell a joke? You wanna hear a joke? I have to make it like more bearable. Okay, here's a joke for you, this car. That's a fucking joke. And here's a beach on the left. Hmm. Hello. Bye bye. <sighs> OK, 
Okay, with the shit tires, I'm probably just gonna lift slightly and go on the gas again. Could have been just also full flat out there through there through Mood Curva, but oh well. Let's not take unnecessary risks because driving this shitbox is a risk on itself already. Yay! <laughs> I'm surprised that the brakes are holding up okay, but then again, we almost don't use them at all, so... So, strangely enough, the... the what's it called? Well, full Arivatanen mode here. The... not the brakes, but the traction control only kicks in in the left-hand corner, so... That's... That's something to look at. I wonder, maybe it will go away with new suspension, because the geometry will change slightly, but at this point, honestly, no idea. Well, let's not to celebrate too soon, because we haven't made it till the end of the lap yet. Okay, some faster Porsches. One, come on, two. Go, 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 I'm staying on the right for you, go, go, go. Bro, please. Thank you. That. <laughs> ah, there we go. That's the only thing. <laughs> so it's glued. Yeah, there's fucking glue on it. <sighs> what a shit box. So as you can see, luckily it was just a boost pipe that flew off. So we can conclude that this baby really wants to go ready. Even after 330,000 kilometers, it feels like, oh, never crank, let's go for it. And uh, yeah, well, we cannot really do it at this point. But I'm very much looking forward to see where the car is going to go in literal places, how fast it is going to go with the new engine from Dark Side Developments and the whole, the whole mechanical setup around it and all the suspension parts and everything and cage, etc. So, but for that, you know, subscribe, like, share. We're going to build a very cool car. I'm very much excited for it. And like last year with the racing program, you will be able to play part with it. So we have a couple of interesting participation opportunities, so to say, for people who want to support this project in a very cool way. But I'll get to that in a separate video. But until then, thanks for watching, guys. Looking forward to see you next time in tomorrow's video here at the Nürburgring on my channel. And have a good day. Bye-bye.